Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome in to Anno 1800. Now, this is likely going to be the last playthrough for Anno 1800 here on the channel. The last Let's Play of it. I do have some guides, tips and tricks types videos, and a few other things I have planned that I'd like to come out with over the next month or so. But as far as sitting down and playing the game and recording and everything else, this is likely going to be it. Uh, you know, Anno's been out for five years now. There are other projects I have on the horizon that I want to get started on. And I think this is a good time to go ahead and say goodbye to one of our favorite little city builder games. Now, the format of this series, as you can see in the background, is a time lapse. I have been playing Anno kind of on my own in the background for a couple of weeks now, uh, whenever I have a little extra time and recording the entire thing. So I want to lead you through the building of this city here on Crown Falls and my thought process behind it all and everything that I do and that goes through my head while I'm laying out the city. So I hope you guys are excited for this. Let me know down below in the comments and also leave a like on this video. I do want to make sure this one gets out to everybody and they can see it. Some of my videos lately have not been getting out to my audience and everything else. So be sure to leave a like and a comment so the YouTube algorithm gods will uh, at least let people know that, hey, I recorded another video. So with all that quickly out of the way, let's talk about what's going on right here. So as you can see, I am using stamps. I got these stamps right here from the Anno Stamps website. These are called the Organic City Layout. I'm using them just as a basis, just as a simple blueprint for the city. I am using a lot of mods as well, by the way. And if you're interested in the mods, uh, down below in the description will be a list of all the mods that I am using. So this is a heavily modded uh, game right here, but it's just how I really like to play the game and how I want to finish it off for myself. So yes, I did decide to use a lot of stamps for this one right here to get myself started and to get the basic city layout going right there by the shoreline. Uh, these organic city layouts, I really like them. Uh, they're based on the 10 by 10, just a lot bigger. And I really like the uh, variation and layouts and everything else. And I do go through and I start taking those stamps later on and I'll start deleting sections of them to add in larger areas for, you know, factories and churches and cathedrals and parks and everything else. But this gives me a good basic layout right here that I can kind of start playing around with. I do leave a lot of space for boulevards and later on I actually go through and I use the mass move ability to even further expand these and add even more boulevards later on. I don't want just constant square upon square upon square. I want things to be more spread out and to have a lot of green space in between it. But this first initial square that I've laid out with these uh, handful of stamps and everything, that's my first initial part of the city and what I focus on in this episode. I get all of that laid out, all of it uh, built up and everything else, and I do get to investors. I get to investors in this one uh, in about two and a half hours of playtime. Uh, that's about how long it takes me to get to investors here. I don't go to the new world at all in this one because I am using items from the Grand Gallery so I can skip things like cotton fabric because I have access to Master Craftsman Frank. So when I kind of start out right here, all I'm doing is focusing on getting everything upgraded as quickly as possible. As you can see, I'm already in workers. I placed down one of those awesome little churches. Uh, I think they're little chapels. They're by Lion053. They're so awesome. They're just, just the cutest little churches. I love them so much. Uh, and I do use those and everything several times until later on when I actually put down some bigger churches and chapels in the city. But for right now, I love that little 3x3 three three church. It's so, so nice. I really like the layout how this is done because I can like slap down that market alongside a pub and it, a market and a pub actually fits in the exact same space as a two by three housing layout. Just in case you were ever curious about that. If you put a market and a pub back to back and surround them with roads, they will fit into a two by three housing layout, which is one reason I really liked this stamp and everything because I could fit everything in nice and neat and still make it look kind of cool later on. I'm also using a, uh, a set of mods 
that I had uh, talked about in another video recently about some mods that had just come out recently that I really liked. And those are like the uh, the city bakery, the city slaughterhouse, and the uh, the the shoes, the the cobbler. So I'm using those right there, and I really like them because they are three by three buildings. They fit really nice into the city layout. And I could just make it look really cool. So here I am putting down the shoes right there, stuck that right there on that edge and everything. I, I just absolutely love that. Kind of continuing on through, I'm a liberal use of stamps, as you can see. Lots and lots of stamp usage. Stamps just really make everything a lot easier to quickly place down without having to think about it. Obviously, all of this is going to go away later on, which is why I'm not really concerned about how it looks or anything. This is all just temporary, essentially. It's all just temporary, and it's just there to get all of my needs fulfilled. And later on, I'll move this stuff off of this island, off of Crown Falls, or Carthold, as it's called here, and get those somewhere else and have the space opened up for more of the city. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to cover the entire island in a city, or if I do want it to be kind of like more centralized around the harbor areas where the city is at and then transition into farmland in the background. I haven't fully decided yet how big of a metropolis I want to build here on Crown Falls. I'm still deciding on that part. Uh, but later on, I'll, you know, I'll give it some more thought. Um, I haven't I haven't done much more other than what you're seeing in this particular episode. So I haven't really gone through and really come up with a big plan for it but I will at some point I will come up with a big plan for it eventually so as you can see we're already in artisans we're getting all those needs fulfilled you know I'm, I'm kind of barreling through it honestly I'm barreling through as quick as possible making everything happen as fast as possible my main goal is to hurry up and get to investors and get everything the basic the basic stuff unlocked and get it going. I want to get all of that kind of stuff unlocked. I do have all DLCs enabled for this. However, I haven't fully decided about how I'm going to do the high life stuff. Most people know that I'm not a fan of skyscrapers, but I do think I want uh, some skyscrapers around the city, but I don't know to what extent and where I might have them. Resources was really building materials in general actually was kind of my my big problem for the most part while I was playing. I'm kind of rushing through things so quickly that I keep running out of things. And as you can see right here, I'm doing something I rarely ever do and that's actually building the um, the steel, the steel beams and factory and everything. I rarely ever do this, but I needed more steel beams than what Archie was giving me. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to have to go ahead and get this in and start making my own because I need them so badly. I, I, I so rarely build this thing anymore, but it, it's just one of those things I had to do it. I needed more steel and it just had to be built. As you can see, of course, money's not a problem. Workforce is not a problem. I am just playing this on normal difficulty settings, you know, high income, high influence. I wasn't looking for a challenge. I just wanted to build and have a good time. No AI on the map at the moment. However, I am, of course, using the AI Shipyard mod. And so later on, I will be adding AI to the map. Uh, probably going to be adding Mercier and um, the Admiral, Admiral Vincente. They're two of my favorites, so I'll probably add them later on. But for right now, just kind of keeping it simple by myself. That way I can kind of build up, do my thing, and play around for a little while before I have to consider anything else. And, you know, just normal standard Anno gameplay stuff, you know, adding in more of that production, constantly checking the statistics screen. It's something that so many players still don't do enough of is checking that statistics screen. So I'm checking that very liberally, making sure I'm producing enough of everything, getting it going. Uh, I am putting down a post office right here. I am using a post office mod that lets me put down these smaller 3x3 post offices that don't need aluminum profiles from the new world. It's a little cheaty, I guess you could say, but honestly, I don't really care. 
And so I'm kind of waiting for it to ramp up right there. That way it starts producing enough mail. It takes it a few minutes, but eventually it does catch up and I do start producing enough mail and everything. And then I have more than enough than I need. Turning on that local mail, getting the extra uh, boost of workforce and a little bit more income. Now here you can see I'm upgrading some of those worker houses into uh, Jacob's um, old world, uh, what are they called? Terraced homes, the terraced things. The terraced workers and also have the terraced artisans. I absolutely love them. I think they are really, really fantastic looking buildings. Um, so yeah, I definitely, uh, the new, uh, Jacob's old world and Jacob's new world, um, cities mod i think it's industrial cities actually and then the new world those are two mods that i think everyone should have they are so so good they add so much flavor to your cities and make it look really really just give it that really good industrial look so we're getting all that kind of built right there getting the tea and everything and the um and the tools workshop and everything else i, I do a lot of fiffling around here trying to figure out where to put everything that's kind of par for the course for me uh, and then, of course, later on, I essentially move everything uh, because I am using Talidus's River Slots mod. And, of course, that comes with a River Slot power plant in Engineers. And so I do end up moving all the industry temporarily by a River Slot. But we'll talk about that a little bit more when I get to that section of the video. Now, I did put down my first fur coat dealer and are getting my um, my trade union put in because, again, I am using items from the Grand Gallery. So I want to get that Master Craftsman Frank going on the uh, fur coat dealer so I can replace the need for um, fur and cotton fabric with just iron and wool and go ahead and get those, those uh, fur coats going as soon as possible without having to go to the New World to get all that cotton fabric. I also use Bruno Ironbright and I slap him over top of a sewing machine factory at some point. I think it's very soon I do that. And I can start producing those advanced weapons and steam motors to use both as exports and to sell some of those extra, uh, the extra ones for uh, just income. Uh, it's so much money you can make from that. All right, yeah, here, right here, get rid of that pub, moving it out of the way because I do want a town hall right here. And that town hall is going to get an actor in it. That actor, of course, is going to supply my artisans and later on the engineers with canned food once I have that guy right there, the Variety Theater placed down. And I struggle trying to find places for a Variety Theater. It's such an odd shape. It doesn't fit in nicely with anything. Uh, I, I put it right there for right now. Uh, later on, it does get moved, but that's a, an okay spot for it at the moment. At least get that actor and stuff going so I can uh, supply all of the canned food and rum to those people. Uh, artisans. It's just constant upgrading, upgrading of everything I've got in the city, trying to fill out this square later on and get everybody in there. There's the, yeah, there's the sewing machine factory. And I think I move him. Don't I move him? Yeah, I do move him. I worried about so hard about where to place some of these industries. And then later on, I move it all anyways. It's just normal. I think, uh, did I put a, yeah, I got a Pharos in there. Place down another one, get us another Ferris right there. That way I can increase the production of my steel. And I start buying stuff. I love buying things from the AI. To me, it's basically just easy production. Um, it's production at the cost of money without having to worry about workforce. So I can buy steel and I can buy iron from old Nate. And at this point in the game, he's supplying about three per minute. So that's a three per minute production that I don't have to put on my island. That's kind of how I look at it. So I like to just go ahead and start buying that stuff. Uh, the same thing with Eli and the ores. I start buying those ores from him and especially the iron and coal. It's so dirt cheap. 
And you know, it's just, I don't have to worry about settling an island and building mines and having to have the workforce. I just pay a little bit of money. I'm not worried about the cash and everything. I'm gonna have plenty of it from selling everything else. Everything looks good. Always love to see those bars in balance. I'm making sure I'm producing everything I need. All right, and time for our university so we can move on to the um, engineer phase. Upgrade a couple of upgrade a couple of them. Oh, I think I'm gonna up, I'm gonna did I? I didn't. thought I was about to upgrade some of those into uh, engineers, but I did not do that yet. I don't remember why I didn't do it, but I decided not to do it just yet. There we go. Now we're about to. There we go. And engineers. So here is where I decide to start moving everything around because I remembered, oh yeah, we have river slot. Um, river slot power plants. I had forgotten about those. Of course, I do need concrete for all of that, so I start hooking up all the other mines. And I will go ahead and apologize for sometimes cutting off mid-sentence. I have a terrible, terrible cough right now, and I am recording this audio over top of the video and everything while I'm watching it in the background. So I have to kind of just stop recording on a, stop recording my voice on occasion and mute it so I can cough. So I do apologize if randomly caught off in the middle of the sentence, but I'm trying not to cough myself to death right now. Yeah, so river slot right there. Got it placed down where I want it. That way I can start moving all my industry over here. Um, the way my harbors are going to work out is the harbor in front of the city uh, where I kind of initially settled. That's going to be my Docklands Harbor. I'm going to set up a huge docklands right there and spread my docklands out all on that side and then have some of the less dirty industry probably over on this side of the map near docklands. But then this side of the harbor right there where I'm putting the uh, river slot uh, power plant, I'm going to kind of make that more of the slums. I'm going to put a lot of my heavier, dirtier industry over there along with the uh, terraced worker homes because they, they have that very tenement look to them and I really like that. So this is going to be kind of more of a slum area of town right here. So I do I, I do start shifting things around. Uh, I still have to design a harbor and I haven't gotten around to doing that. I'm kind of waiting until I unlock all the stuff for the Docklands. I want to get all the Docklands modules unlocked before I start designing the Docklands harbor because otherwise I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Now this area, this harbor over here, also needs to be designed, but it's less restrictive on Docklands, of course. And I'll probably be laying that out very soon when I start playing and recording again and trying to get this area of town looking kind of interesting. And yeah, here we go with the mass movement of everything, getting everything shuffled over there by the power plant. And even if you don't use, you know, Talitus's river slots mod and the river slot buildings and everything, doing stuff like this and kind of centralizing all of your production around a, your first power plant is really, really crucial. One good strategy you can usually do is to have the power plant sit in the center between your residential and your industry. Have all your industry kind of grouped around one side of your town and then have the you know the residents on the other and leave space in the center for a power plant that way your first initial power plant can cover your industry and your residential areas for your engineers so they can be upgraded to investors and that way you get benefit from um, all of it without having to figure out where to put everything basically just split it down the middle later on you'll be able to have more power plants and you can you know refine that and spread things out and change up the layout a little bit. But your first initial power plant, definitely want to have that somewhere, um, you know, in the center, uh, in, in a center dividing area between industry and residential.
I think here I start going through and I think I start hooking up all the different mines and everything. I've got plenty of workforce, I got plenty of money. I need a lot of I need a lot of iron and coal, so I just start you know, going to all of them basically and hooking up as much stuff as I can. These are also great places, as you can see right there, for uh, woodcutters. You know, it's far away from town. Uh, you know, the space isn't being used for anything else right now, so it's a great place to put woodcutters out there. Obviously, if you have docklands, you can import wood, but early on, you're kind of limited by the number of import contracts you have. So I would not waste that with something like wood or anything. You know, I think I, I don't have it set up just yet. I haven't started doing docklands yet. But my, typically my initial dockland stuff is um, like sausages I usually start because sausages unlocks a lot of different stuff in a couple of different, um, a couple of different imports. So like sausages is a good one to start out with. Uh, cement is a really good one to start out importing is importing the, your cement to make your concrete and everything uh, because you'll need to import port certain amounts of cement to start unlocking later uh later goods with from that uh contractor in the import contracts anyway and everything so like, things like that are really good to go ahead and start so i am buying rum and coffee from kahina right now again haven't gone to the new world or anything so i need coffee from kahina i don't need much right now oh here we go with our first one and is is the sausage what i start out with i don't know I'm kind of scrolling through there trying to remember because I always have to remember. I can never remember. Looking at the ones I definitely want to import later on, especially the steel. Yeah, brass is the really good one. I like to import brass, which is why I like to hurry up and get the cement unlocked because you need to import uh, a certain amount of brass, certain amount of cement to unlock brass. And that just saves you a lot of time and a lot of workforce and money from having to get copper and zinc. So yeah, sausages, definitely. Uh, you need to import sausages to unlock beer. Uh, beer is easy enough to produce, but I also like to go ahead and just import that. So get those sausages coming in first. Importing sausages also helps uh, with vulgarity on your island because that's you don't need slaughterhouses at that point. You don't need the pig farms for it. So importing those sausages really helps with the vulgarity on the island, which increases your attractiveness on the island, which once you build the public mooring just means more money coming in for you. So definitely a good thing to go ahead and get those um, kind of that, that kind of stuff taken care of and out of the way. Got plenty of pigs going. We'll turn some of those off. Don't need all of it. And I did set the sausages to be sold and everything. That way I don't ever cap out and I can continuously import sausages and I don't ever, um, I won't cap out on them at all. It, it's kind of a trick. You have to kind of start playing around with making sure that you don't sell too much of what you have in stock that you're trying to import. Because if you try to, you know, sell too much, uh, then you may run out. So it's kind of a it's kind of a play it by ear. You set set it as high as you think you might need it, and then you can inch it down a little bit later on, and make sure you're not selling too much. I like I actually do run out of um, fish and sausage because I set it at the wrong amount, and then I had to go back and refine that amount that I'm selling to make sure that I have enough in stock. Typically, the amount you want to keep in stock that you don't want to sell needs to be roughly how much you are importing plus a little extra as a buffer. So if I'm importing 200 tons of fish, I should set my, you know, uh, I should set my stock that I want to sell over at around maybe 215, 220, just to keep a little extra. Yeah, you want to keep it just a little bit higher uh, because you will drop down below that amount because the neutral traders are going to come and buy everything over 200. And then your people are going to start consuming everything else below that. And so you'll drop down below the 200. But um, 
but you just have to find that fine they had to find that happy medium right there basically now this is the part i really struggled with i decided to use um a small coal power plant which again comes from jacob's uh city variations i believe it is and it's a it's a it's a small power plant it's it doesn't need train tracks or anything because it, it just uses coal which is something i think should have been in the game to begin with was a coal power plant it just makes sense to me so i do use a small coal power plant it has a very small very limited range around it so you know it's not like overpowered or anything um it's very well balanced actually it's a very small range but trying to find a good place for it was such a struggle and i don't know what i'm doing right here Oh, okay. Yeah. I wanted to start using the uh, terraced artisan homes, but I just was like, I'll just screw it. I'm just going to tear them down and replace them. And then I put those London skin suburbs on it. I, I think that looks so good. I love that skin pack. It looks absolutely phenomenal. As usual, I forgot to put down fire stations and everything exploded and everything caught fire. So, you know, having to catch up to that part right there and fix that little problem. And those, uh, those city versions of like the bakeries and stuff, they fit in so, so nicely with the rest of the city. Um, you put in, in between buildings and they just, they just blend in so naturally. I really, really love the way they look. Got a few more things unlocked right there from importing all of that sausage and everything. So, you know, just kind of scrolling through, taking a look and to see what else I want to do once I have some more contracts available to me. And we are ready to start supplying spectacles and everything, which requires that brass as well as light bulbs. Get all of that going for us. Yeah, now we're ready. Now comes my... I struggled trying to decide where to put the uh, power plant. And it's very temporary because I will be adding gas power plants uh, later on. Uh, I do I do go to the Arctic later on. Uh, I don't show it on the video just because I've done the Arctic for you guys so many times. Uh, but I do go to the Arctic to set up Arctic gas because uh, I will be using gas power plants across Crown Falls. Uh, right there, I was just kind of looking to see... How I wanted to handle the power plant situation. And I did go with that. You can see the how much smaller the range is for those small power plants as compared to the regular ones. It is much, much smaller. It's a great little building though. I'm definitely going to use that in several parts of the city. Um, probably like, especially like around some of the, uh, like, dirtier areas of town like the you know the industrial areas i definitely will probably be using that little power plant right there i think it just looks just phenomenal i love the way it looks and here we are ready to go to investors already and one thing i do want to say though is that um, even though i am using a lot of mods and everything Getting to investors this fast, again, it took me about two and a half hours, roughly, to get to investors, uh, just kind of doing what I'm doing right here, doing quests and taking my time somewhat. Um, none of that had anything to do with mods, though. You know, the reason I can get to investors so fast is mostly because of the Grand Gallery. Having access to, like, Master Craftsman Frank so I can basically skip the New World when it comes to having to do fur coats is is absolutely amazing the only thing that kind of might have been mod related in a way like a quote cheat is a small coal power plant 
But at the same time, you know, you start on the island with oil anyways. All I would have had to do was build an oil uh, an oil refinery and an oil harbor and place down a power plant. So it really wasn't any different. This just saved me a little bit. Uh, just saved me, you know, just a few, like, like maybe like two minutes from having to set up a quick train layout. So it really wasn't that much of a difference or anything. But yeah, already at investors, getting all of them uh, supplied. And from here, I just do a lot of tweaking and everything. I, I do expand the whole city out. Um, I do upgrade the whole city. But now I just do a lot of tweaking. I'm trying to, you know, fulfill lifestyle needs and make sure I have all of that done. And I do start doing a lot of rearranging and everything. Uh, I do have a section of the video coming up shortly where I start doing some decorating in the city. Uh, because obviously I want it to look really pretty. And I've not been focused on decorating. Obviously, I haven't done a single bit. I've been focused on getting everything supplied and getting myself up to investors so I can get most of the stuff unlocked. Except for, you know, obviously like the high life stuff. I haven't done any tourist related stuff yet. I don't have any zoos, museums or anything else built anywhere. That's all coming, you know, soon ish. Uh, I do have a few sets I do want to build on this island and, and as far as, you know, cultural buildings and stuff go. I just haven't started that part of the process yet. I am importing um, canned food now as well because, you know, I, I'm not trying to, well, and I don't have a, you know, a perfect, nice Pokeball layout of town halls. So I am importing some canned food to help, you know, offset that. And I do get myself into a little bit of a problem because I wasn't paying attention to my exports and I had my exports all screwed up essentially. And I was running out of everything. I had to redo all my exports. And this is when I realized that, oh yeah, the uh, the tea factory is powered, but the, the tea harbor was not. So I had to build a second one. I was like, why am I running out of tea? This is silly. And then I, I realized what I had done wrong. Realized my little mistake. I am going on to the Arctic first. Uh, this is the first expedition I've done. I have not even gone to the New World yet. But I wanted to go ahead and get the Arctic unlocked and get it going. That way I could start getting my Arctic gas brought in as soon as possible and start uh, putting down my gas power plants so I can reach more of the city than I can with those small power plants. So we are sending, we are getting a, um, a cargo ship loaded up with what I need for that uh, expedition right there. Is this where I do it? Oh, I don't. Oh, okay, that's right. I was just looking for places to put more of that yeah there we go just mass upgrade mass upgrade all the things this is kind of how i like to do my upgrades i kind of just upgrade everything at once and then i go back and you know fix it all i go back and fix my productions after i've done all the upgrading i want because that's you know a lot of people worry about making sure they have everything fulfilled first but then they go and they upgrade everything, then they have to go make sure it's all fulfilled again, then they upgrade a little more, then they go back. And they, they do a lot of back and forth. Um, I, I think that's kind of a waste of time. Go ahead and do all your upgrades. Mass upgrade everything that you want to mass upgrade. Then go and fix the production. You know, I, I want to go ahead and get, you know, all the farmers upgraded I wanted. All the... Of course, I'm running out of wood and everything right now, so I can't do a mass upgrade, which is what I'm attempting to do. I want to get as much upgraded as possible right now. I just keep running out of building materials. I think I do slap down another, um, a cut of late. I think I slap down like two more stamped woodcutter layouts just to get as much as possible. Now here I am setting all of my special scrap to be bought. That is a trick in Cape Trelawney, or in, of course, this is not Cape Trelawney. This is the modded Old World with uh, Crown Falls and Old Nate. Yeah, either one will still work, but you can set your special scrap to be bought. And then set a schooner up to go to all of your islands to pick up special scrap and drop it off, you know, wherever you, you, know, wherever you want it dropped off at. 
That's a good little trick you can do. Oh, here, I'm doing a little decorating. I didn't even really notice that. Yeah, doing a little decorating, starting to uh, create my roundabouts, creating my, uh, my tree-lined streets. Now, my little tree-lined streets, I'm really, really proud of. Um, I figured out, you know, what to do with that. Because, you know, a lot of people, they put the tree line down the middle and they'll have roads on each side. You know, they'll make a three tile wide where they'll put trees down the middle with the roads on each side. That actually looks a little funny to me. I like having the road down the middle and trees on each side. Oh, this this town square right here gave me a fit and I left it in there just to show you how long it takes me to figure out what to do with something. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah. The tree light streets, I really like doing them, but um, it is it is hard to do without mods sometimes because, you know, you can, obviously, the some if you have, like, long row of houses, if you have trees in front of them, they can't reach the road. So you can either delete one tile of the uh, tree line and put, like, a road tile basically connecting the house, or if you're using something like uh, the... London suburb skin pack it comes with a model that is actually has a as a space down the center of the three by three tile that you can drag a road down through and I'll put that on the back side to connect up on the front and everything that way I don't have to break the uh, tree lined street and everything else and it looks kind of cool I spend forever on this I spend so long on this stupid square right here trying to decide what to do and it does not stay like this, by the way. I'll go ahead and tell you that now. I do change it later on because I'm like, eh, I don't like it. So, yeah, that 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 doesn't stay. But I think I'll get, leave you guys for a few minutes and let you just watch me kind of do a little bit of decorate and everything else for a few minutes. And I shall be back here in just a moment. So a little bit of decorating and everything, trying to green up the city some, but you know, kind of moving forward now and 
supplying some more of those goods and everything, you saw me putting down the uh, suits and everything, which are needed by the Tier 2 terraced homes, as well as the sardines, uh, I think the canned sardines or something like that. Getting those and everything put in, more town halls, more items. Right now, my standard little item setup I'm using is the actor, a uh, actor, Mr. Garrick, and then I have a don't leave it till later, don't leave it till later espressinator, which reduces coffee consumption by 30% at the moment. And that's just because I'm not producing coffee in the new world right now. So I'm just, I'm trying to keep my coffee consumption down so I can keep it all fulfilled from Kahina at the moment. Had some extra space right here trying to decide what to do with it. I think I actually eventually make it a little park. Yeah, here we go. We're going to make a little park out of it. I like making these kind of little parks right here all, all over the place. You know, a, a hedgerow fence with using those arches and stuff as archways. And just making some little paths and everything. They're, they're very simple. They're very, you know, easy and neat and easy to make and everything. And I just think they look really nice. Yeah, see, it's just, you know, just a nice little green space. You know, add in a few little chairs and a few, you know, benches and everything else in there. It's just a simple little green space in the middle of the city, uh, which just kind of helps break up the monotony of the buildings. Slowly starting to try to, you know, refine the edges of the city and everything else and the, uh, you know, the, um, whatchamacallits, the houses and everything else. Try to, try to start to create, you know, an interesting looking areas of town and everything else right there. I also, at this point, realized that the post offices don't need to be connected to a road. So I was like, oh, yes, good. I can use those in the middle right there. Um, still not the biggest fan of post offices. Even these modded ones, they just, I just can't ever get them to look right. So moving everything around a little bit to make better use of my space and everything else and put those, you know, little three by three post offices in other places. You don't really need too many post offices, especially if you're not going to be doing like regional and international mail, which I probably won't be sending any mail off of Crown Falls. I do have a giant central post office. Um, I, had, I had laid out a blueprint of the uh, World's Fair just so I could save some space for it. But I, do, I of course, I moved it right there because I decided I wanted the central post office somewhere else. Uh, I wanted it up that way. It's a gorgeous building. I really felt like it needed, you know, a nice, a nice um, prominent location along the one of the main broadways through the city. There it goes. I think that's where it currently still lives. So much mail. Quit placing mail stuff. I'm yelling at myself. Quit placing mail stuff. We don't need any more. But now it just becomes, you know, a point of, you know, continuously laying out more of the city and trying to decide how I want the road network and the road structure to look. Uh, again, these stamps I used were a great basis for how I wanted everything to look. But eventually I did want it to, you know, not stick to exactly how it was originally laid out and change up roads, change up, you know, different areas. I do like having long sight lines uh, down my roads and everything and not having them so broken up. So I do, you know, shift things around, you know, twist and turn certain parts of the layout. And here I actually, oh, I do show how I do the, yeah, so this is what I was talking about earlier. So let's kind of show, let me, no, do a peace treaty. Uh, let me just show right here then. So I do, I go through and I put down. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to move those houses out of the way. I'm going to grab two of those terraced homes. I'm going to turn them into the London skin pack. And then I drag a road up through them. And then instantly 
Those houses that didn't have any road access now have road access. It's absolutely perfect. It makes uh, it makes having these, you know, tree-lined streets so much easier. And I really, really like it. Now, one of the problems you're about to see me run into, though, is corners. Yeah, that corner right there. Didn't think that through, having the corner building right there. That one was going to be... I'm sitting there looking at it like, oh, right. I forgot about that part. <laughs> um, trying to decide how to do that. Change those, flip those to the ones with the road in the middle, road, road, connected, and then I'm staring at that corner like, okay, what do I do? <laughs> and what I come up with, I'm not happy about. I actually change it several times right here. I don't even remember if I leave all of it in the video or not at this point. Um, I'm recording the commentary almost a week after I actually did the editing on the video because I've been so sick lately. Um, so I can't remember what all I've left in, what all I have not. But I'm not super happy with the way all of it turned out. Um, yeah, I've got two corners right there. I'm like, I, I'm sitting there like looking at it like, where? And like, that's what you can do with if you don't have mods, which you saw I do right there. I take out a section of it and then I just plop down. I used a, uh, a plaza that's doubling as a street. Yeah, I do some weird stuff trying to make it work and I'm not happy with it. And I'm probably going, now that I look at it again, I'm going to change it all. Because I just don't like how any of it's coming out. It's just not, it's just not, it's not doing it for me. That little spot right there is just not doing it for me. So I'm going to have to make some alterations to this little intersection. I'll probably do that as soon as I get done recording this commentary right here. Uh, but this does kind of show you that, you know, a lot of it comes down to, you know, constant staring at it. A lot of people ask me, how do you beauty build? How do you make things look so cool? Um, a lot of trial and error. I say, okay, this is what I currently... This is what it currently looks like. Um, I think I actually just end up filling it in with roads. I tried to put some ornaments in there and I wasn't, tr I wasn't happy with it. And I think I just filled it in with roads, but I wasn't too, too happy with the way it comes out. And yeah, I'm gonna end up changing it all. That, that intersection is my bane right now, I think. Uh, I have some ideas on what I can do with it. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I'm not sure yet. And that stupid variety theater. It is, uh, the variety theater is just, is, uh, is the bane of my existence. Yeah, I do this little thing right here, and yeah, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Yeah, none of that looks good. None of that looks good at all. I hate it all. It's all gotta go. It's all gotta go. It's all gotta change. I gotta make some changes to what I've done. Yeah, see, that's what it all looks like right now, and it's, that's garbage. That's garbage. I can do better. Absolute garbage. We can make that look so much better. And I do make it look so much better later on. I, uh, I do some hefty changes to it. Using those roads and everything like that in the middle to, you know, change up the look and layout. And instead of, you know, parks or fountains or whatever in the middle, adding in just more houses in the center. And using those uh, London, that London, that London model with a road through it to fix it up a little bit more. I really like how it comes out. One little trick I do find out later on, which I don't show in this video, is that once you have the road taken through there, you can actually change that building model to something else and the road still counts. The road is still basically clipped underneath the building itself. So you don't have to have that big, tall building and stuff everywhere. Um, I do go through later on, again, not on this video, but I do start changing all those buildings to a smaller building uh, smaller height building instead of the big tall kind of skyscrapery looking thing with the road going through it just because you know it's a little it's kind of just a little glitch in how it works but I'm gonna leave y'all uh, just the last few minutes of this part right here. There's a few more minutes of it and then I've got just some nice little time lapses of the city as it grows for you guys here at the end. So I'll be back towards the very end of the video here in a couple of minutes and I will talk to you guys then.
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. And again, yeah, here is just a uh, bird's eye view of the city as it evolved over the course of about three and a half to four hours total of playtime and everything. So I had a lot of fun building this and getting it started. I have a lot of ideas going forward. Watching this uh, playback and everything and talking with you guys through it, I've seen several things that I want to change about how the city looks. So I have several uh, several things going forward. Yeah, I'm gl hopefully you have been able to stick with me this long, and I'm sorry for some of my little rambling. Still not feeling very good right now, having a lot of trouble coughing and breathing sometimes, but I am doing my best to get through that right now. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, again, leave a like and a comment down below, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next part of this series. Until then, take care, guys.